Join me in Revision Surgery Suite as I walk through a few of my surgical cases. By combining advanced technology with my skills as a fellowship trained corneal specialist, I'm able to improve a patient's vision and quality of life. Helping people achieve their best vision is definitely rewarding and absolutely life changing. This next surgical case is a standard or traditional cataract surgery that's done by hand and you'll see that each step is done manually where we do incisions, open the capsule around the lens, divide up the lens all with uh, by hand with specialized instruments. It's sort of the traditional way to do cataract surgery. Viewer discretion is advised. This video shows live footage from an actual surgical procedure. So this is a patient with a dense 4 plus nuclear sclerotic cataract. As you can see, there's a little bit of brunescence, so a fairly dense lens. I usually score at the limbus to help the incision to seal nicely and, and do a biplanar incision with the diamond keratome. This is a manual case, so we're manually performing a capsular rexus opening the anterior capsule in a circular fashion, starting with a puncture of the cystitome needle. And I get the rexus started by lifting a flap. And then I initiate the circular distal portion of the rexus, leave the flap there so I can grasp it easily with the Utrata forceps going in now. I adjusted the microscope light to enhance the red reflex because of the dense cataract, it was difficult to visualize the anterior capsule until I used some coaxial illumination here. I'm using Utrata forceps to make a curvilinear capsular rexus. I usually have the goal of doing a four pole circular capsular rexus that's centered on the pupil. This is a Chang hydrodissection cannula used to perform hydrodissection, separating the capsule from the lens, and you can see the fluid wave there. And then I use the tip of the Chang to rotate the lens, make sure it's freely mobile. I added some oblique illumination to better visualize the lens fragments. This is an injection of subconjunctival lidocaine to numb the area that we will eventually inject the trimoxy through for patient comfort. The phaco emulsification handpiece going in with the sharp tip and vibrating ultrasound energy to emulsify the lens fragments. The off hand and the right side there is a Chang Sai Bell horizontal chopper, which is horizontal chopping is my preferred technique. So I go to the lens equator and then impale the nucleus and then in a horizontal manner touch the two tips and then separate. This really helps minimize phaco emulsification energy and is better for the corneal endothelium. It's also a more efficient way to perform cataract surgery. Same technique to create the first two quadrants. and begin to take the first fragment, the first quadrant. And then I rotate it, make sure that, and ensure that that piece is freely mobile and not attached posteriorly. The chopper is also used to protect the posterior capsular bag from coming to the phaco tip. And then remove the final hemineucleus, first dividing it into the last two quadrants. Again, as opposed to sculpting uh, and taking a lot longer and using a lot more f ultrasound energy, the chopping does that work for me. And it's a dense nucleus, so sometimes I do an additional chop of a quadrant to further minimize ultrasound energy and protect the endothelium. Now what's remaining is the cortex of the lens adherent to the capsule. And we'll use an irrigation aspiration handpiece to vacuum the cortical material out. I like to make sure that I am engaging and aspirating from the anterior capsule 
and then peeling the cortex off posteriorly thereafter. If you grab cortex too far posteriorly, you'll get those adherent strands that are difficult to remove from the posterior capsule. So if you stay anterior, that's helpful. Anterior and just under the capsule. And then subincisional cortex. Now that the cataract's out, you can better visualize the capsule rexus. This is insertion of a three-piece lens. And then I use the IA handpiece to vacuum out the viscoelastic anteriorly. Then I go under the lens to remove viscoelastic posteriorly to avoid pressure spikes and to avoid a myopic shift early in the post-operative period. And when all the viscoelastic is removed from the posterior aspect of between the lens and the capsule, it's confirmed by seeing a linear fold in the posterior capsule, so I know it's all gone. Stromal hydration to seal the wound. I like to do both sides of the incision plus the anterior uh, lip of this incision as well. That helps further secure the wound. Always challenging the incision to ensure a good seal. Measuring 3.5 millimeters from the limbus for a pars plana injection of trimoxy, a mixture of moxifloxacin and triamcinolone. And if done very slowly, the patients should not feel this injection. We also inject a little subconjunctival trimoxy for anterior penetration. I always check the pressure and burp the wound because the trimoxy adds some volume and increases the pressure. So I decrease the pressure at the end of the case to be normal tensive. Recentering the lens as the last step.